Folks, good evening. Um, I'd like to uh, call the ordinance subcommittee meeting together uh, this evening. Before I start, uh, I'd like to take uh, attendance. Councilor Andronico. Present. Councilor Kane. Councilor DeBona. Present. Councilor Harris. Councilor Liang. Present. Councilor Mahoney. Councilor Pamucci. Councilor Phelan. Present. Chairman McCarthy. Present. Five members. Thank you. Uh, before we begin, let me read the um, open meeting law pursuant to the open meeting law. Any person may make an audio or video recording of this public meeting or may transmit the meeting through any medium. Attendees are therefore advised that such recordings or transmissions are being made, whether perceived or unperceived, by those present and are deemed acknowledged and permissible. Don't want to lose that. Right? Mm -hmm. So this evening, uh, two orders on the agenda. We're going to flip it and go with the um, Wallace and Center uh, presentation first, as Councillor Kane is um, running a bit late, and I know he wants to um, be here for the um, be here for both. He'll catch the um, Wallace and Center one, but the municipal light plant. I'd like to recognize before I even um, begin and before I forget, um, Councillor Phelan, uh, who's the Ward Five Councillor. We'd like to say a few words. He's going to have to recuse himself, but Councilor Phelan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Due to a conflict of interest I, and on the advice of both the City Legal Council and the and the State Ethics Commission, I've been I've been I, I will recuse myself from the vote, and I will I will come back later in the meeting when you're doing the electric light. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councilor. Uh, in the package that's in, in front of you this evening is the presentation that um, Director Fatsies will be going through. Um, and um, also um, the revitalization district plan uh, that's um, in your package that's signed off in regards to uh, the planning board and Richie Mead. So with that, I will uh, turn it over to uh, Mr. Fatsies. Thank you, Chairman, uh, through you to the council members present. Uh, tonight's presentation uh, is going to be led by uh, Rob Stevens, the Assistant Planning Director, and also uh, with uh, Jeff Fasher uh, representing as well. Uh, so with that, I'm just going to hand the ball off and uh, look forward to the presentation. I hope you are as well. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Um, good evening, Mr. Chairman, through you uh, to the rest of the City Council. It's all good to see you again uh, in person. This is my, my first in-person meeting. Um, so it's excited to get uh, back out of the office and, and off of the computers. So uh, tonight we're here uh, with the proposed Wollaston Urban Renewal Plan. Uh, urban renewal is a, a state uh, a legislative uh, tool that cities and towns can use. And in fact, this city's used it a few years uh, excuse me, the city's used it a few times over the years and more recently and actively uh, we've used it in uh, Quincy Center uh, for over uh, the last 10 years uh, with a lot of good success. Uh, urban renewal allows the city to target specific areas. We've got to create a district. Uh, we've got to take a look at that area, analyze it uh, to see why uh, investment isn't occurring in that area and then propose some steps uh, to go ahead and address some of those uh, issues that are discovered in that area. Uh, to help with that tonight, we do have uh, our consultants that have assisted the planning department in organizing the plan, uh, Jeff Fasher from BSE Group, uh, and we also have representatives here from Woodard and Kern who's also assisted in the analysis of the infrastructure shortcomings uh, within Wollaston. Um, so I think one question uh, you folks might ask is, is how did we get here today? Uh, Chairman McCarthy mentioned uh, the planning board has already reviewed and endorsed uh, the plan. Uh, the plan calls for the adoption of a citizens advisory committee, uh, which has been done. Uh, that's, uh, the chairman is here. I think they're gonna speak a little bit later and uh, tonight's uh, gonna have a public hearing at seven uh, and you'll hear from some of those folks. But how did the planning department get here? A lot of this has roots back in 2016. Uh, when I appeared before this body proposing a TOD zoning overlay district. 
at that time, uh, we had proposed uh, North Quincy uh, Station as the primary area that needed the TOD zoning overlay. We were responding to the MBTA advertising that station and its surface lot for redevelopment, which I think we all know has occurred. Uh, at the time of that uh, legislation, we did propose the Wollaston MBTA station proper, not the larger business district, and we also proposed the Quincy Adams station uh, proper. Uh, not the whole district. And some of the feedback we received from this body was that those uh, proposed areas at the time in 2016 weren't big enough, weren't aggressive enough. Uh, so we went back to the drawing board. Uh, what we did is uh, we asked the community. There was community meetings in 2018 and 2019 that uh, led us to believe there's a lot of desire for uh, new investment and a new beginning in, in Wollaston. Uh, from there, we started to organize this plan. Um, again, we've hired the consultants we have tonight. Uh, and the first order of business that we had to figure out was creating a district. Um, so this is the district up here. Um, it's primarily on Hancock Street, uh, as well as Newport Ave, with the Beale Street as the primary corridor, corridor connecting those two urban arterials. Um, and uh, for, from this point forward, I do want to introduce um, Jeff Fasher to get into some of the analysis uh, that occurred during the planning process. Uh, he'll walk through that. Uh, at the end of the presentation, you know, we're available, I'm available, uh, Jim and the consultant team to help answer any questions uh, that may come up during that presentation. Uh, so with that, I'd, I'd like to introduce uh, Jeff Fasher from BSC Group. Thank you. Thank you, Rob, and good evening, council members. Thank you for having us here tonight. Uh, again, I'm Jeff Faster with the BSC Group out of Boston, and I'm going to give a brief overview of the urban renewal plan, uh, how we got here, some of the key elements that are within the plan, and certainly be available for questions afterwards. As Rob mentioned, urban renewal is a state program that really allows communities to um, once approved and uh, areas approved, take action to really stimulate economic investment, revitalization, job creation within certain areas of a community that may be struggling economically. And to do so, the state has a very prescriptive process you must go through and certain criteria you must address. And one of them is looking at an area and determining why it qualifies as an urban renewal area. So we did look at conditions within the area and this definition that the state provides for decadent uh, had a number of, you see, as you can see, items checked that apply to the Wollaston area. Uh, items such as buildings out of repair, older buildings, for example, that uh, really haven't been kept up to date and really to be usable in today's economy need, need, need a new infusion of investment. Buildings that have been torn down and not replaced, which we have, and I'll get into it in a minute. A substantial change in the business and economic conditions, such as one example, it's a prime example, is more online shopping, which means retail, on the street retail, has had to reposition itself uh, in recent years. Excessive land coverage, and in this case, there was a lot of pavement in the area, which we'll talk about. And also diversity of lot sizes and ownership, which means if there's a larger development proposal that makes sense from a market perspective, a lot of times the parcels are too small to support that type of development. So once, I shouldn't say once, we, we make certain findings that then determine that the area qualifies as a decadent area. And some of this is gonna be repetitive because it, it, it helps justify the, the finding of decadent. But as, as we all know the area very well, we came up with a number of findings. I've highlighted some of the more important ones here to help illustrate how the area does qualify as an urban renewal area. And the first one is buildings that are physically deteriorated. Many of the buildings were built uh, before 1940. So some of them have been kept up, some of them haven't. Some of them need an infusion of money to make them, uh, as I mentioned earlier, appropriate for a current use. Buildings that have been torn down and not replaced, certainly Wollaston Theater, we all know that site. And then unfortunately the fire on Newport Ave, which caused the demolition of a building over there. So we certainly have vacant parcels that have not been redeveloped. Um, the current zoning in the area allows multiple story buildings to be built. 
but a predominance of the buildings are two stories or less, that'd be 84%, and 41% are one story or less. So there's certainly an opportunity for a denser development there, provided it's, it's the appropriate development that the community wants to see in the neighborhood. The area is severely dominated by surface parking lots. And again, we need parking. We're not saying we're trying to get rid of parking, but by putting parking in the structures, as has been done in downtown, it opens up other areas for development that are currently being used for parking. Uh, the impervious surface gets back to the, the excessive amount of parking lots there. 85% of the proposed urban renewal area in Wollaston is impervious. So that's parking lots, roadways, uh, building roof lines, etc. A lot of impervious area there. And then a lot of them are very small size, 69% are a quarter acre or less, and 90, almost 95% are an acre and less. So again, getting back to the area and showing the, some of the specifics. Again, here's the project area outlined in blue. It's kind of a U shape. The upper right part of the U is Hancock Street. The left side of the U is Newport, and then connecting the two is Beale Street. And we're really focusing on the commercial, primarily the commercial areas within Wollaston, because again, this is about economic investment, economic vitality, job creation. And as Rob mentioned, there were a lot of community meetings that really talked about what people want to see in this area. That partly led to the outline of the, of the urban renewal area boundary but also helped identify many of the priority areas that, need, that people want to see addressed. So the areas outlined in red are the two vacant parcels I mentioned earlier, the, uh, the old Wollaston Theater site and the site on Newport Ave. The blue circles indicate areas with an excessive amount of sur uh, surface parking lot or paved surfaces. Certainly the MBTA parking area has a lot of paved, surface, paved surfaces there as needed for use of the T-Station, but it really would make a lot of sense if, if that parking could go into a structure and it would really open a lot of land with street frontage for development. We also have the large surface parking lot behind CVS and also somewhat of a smaller lot over by the Housing Authority property. And in fact, the Housing Authority is looking to do some, some additional development on their site. So as, by looking at that, we've identified what we call priority focus areas where we want to see initial investment. And again, it gets back to the things we've talked about hearing a recurring theme here. The Wollaston Theater site, uh, Newport Ave, not only the, the area that was um, affected by the fire, but a number of the abutting parcels that are, in, um, again, need a, an infusion of funding or are low story buildings and a higher density could go there certainly within very close proximity of the T station. We think there'd be a lot of interest in investing in that area. And then right in the middle, you'll see a, a rectangle in yellow. That is the parking lot, uh, or not the parking lot, the uh, some retail buildings that are surrounded by the CVS parking lot. It's car rental there, things such as that. That happens to be the low point of the Wollaston neighborhood that we're looking at here. And many of you may know there are flooding problems in this neighborhood. And where do you collect water? You collect it at the low point if you can. We see an opportunity here to collect that water at the low point and through infrastructure improvements really minimize the flooding problems in the neighborhood. And that's where Wooden and Curran has come in and really offered their analysis and their expertise on that. So that's why that area is identified also. You also will note that these are potential acquisition areas. And I wanna make it clear that not every parcel identified for acquisition will be acquired. It just gives the city the opportunity to acquire them through the urban renewal program. If at some point it, it, it's in the city's best interest to do so, if it's in a city, if the city can facilitate a deal and a, a larger economic project in doing so, it gives them some tools to help with um, economic investment in the neighborhood. And certainly at that low point area, the main purpose of a, uh, a potential acquisition there would be to deal with the flooding issue and the stormwater issue. 
along with some of these privately owned parcels, again, the parking lots, the vacant buildings, vacant parcels, there is a need for infrastructure up upgrades in the neighborhood, streets, sidewalks, open space. You know, again, with the T station being there, it's a great neighborhood for people to walk to and from mass transit. We wanna make the sidewalk safe and comfortable and appealing for people to walk back and forth on. Some of the roads have utilities underneath the paved surface that need to be upgraded to support new development. Certainly the stormwater system is one of those. Um, and then with the idea that more people would be living in the neighborhood, the need for more open space or green space, which is in, kind of indicated in bright green here where that may occur. It doesn't mean those are locations where it will occur. It just shows that there is a need for a certain open space in the neighborhood. And then certainly intersections highlighted in yellow, those, that deals with pedestrian crossing, signalization, moving of vehicles through the area because they are still gonna be moving through the area. We want to make sure all the circulation systems work very well together. And this is an illustrative plan. It kind of pulls everything together. It shows in the kind of the orange color where new buildings could be built on those primary areas that are uh, in need of investment and redevelopment. These building footprints are not, most likely not what's gonna get built. They're just a representation of what could happen on these sites. We need to show that to the state. We need to show the state the amount of square footage that could be built on these parcels. Um, so that's why we do a plan like this. It also shows open space, uh, new green spaces in the area and other minor details to help explain to the state what the city is proposing to do in this neighborhood. As with any plan, it comes with a budget. There needs to be an investment. Um, and it's partly an investment by the community and more importantly, an investment by the private sector, but sometimes the community needs to prime the pump. So there is a budget within the plan that talks about uh, the cost of various improvements and actions being proposed. And there's also a funding strategy for that. As you know, in downtown, there's been a, there were a lot of federal and state grants that came into um, the downtown to improve the infrastructure, streets, and open space. The city intends to do the same thing, go after similar grants for the Wollaston area. And also the city is looking into a district improvement financing program for the Wollaston area also, similar to, to downtown. So that increase in property tax revenue would be able to be plugged back into the neighborhood if that DIF program and, and DIF area is approved. So what are we talking about in the end? Well, here's a couple projects that have been recently proposed or approved, permitted lately, and it kind of gives you an idea of the type of development we want to see happen in this neighborhood on these underperforming sites. This is one on Beale Street, you know, residential structure. Um, it's uh, Arlington is on the, the right side of this here. You see how it works into the, the topography of the area residential above, parking beneath. That's what we're hoping to see in other sites. And this one is right on Beale Street. Again, primarily residential, but it also has six commercial spaces and it also has parking on the back side of the building within the building footprint. But I wanna point out the six commercial spaces because a lot of people have mentioned that the interest for local businesses, local retailers, mom and pop shops as we tend to call them, to have a place where they can go. We don't wanna displace them out of the neighborhood. We want them to stay in the neighborhood or come to the neighborhood. I mentioned earlier changing economic conditions with you know ordering online. A lot of the big purchases are happening online, but people still are craving that local mom and pop type of operation, local goods, local services and buildings like this are providing those smaller spaces where that type of commercial uh, activity could take place. So kudos to them for realizing there was a market for that. So how does this relate? How does this plan help the city identify other areas in need of investment? Uh, again, this is that site on Newport. The blue bluish area is where the fire was, maybe a little bigger, but there were parcels around that and buildings around that, that again, <clears throat> excuse me, could use some new investment or the whole area could, could be combined to a larger development parcel with a much more robust development, multi-use facility there. And through urban renewal, the city has the opportunity 
to partner or help or facilitate private investment in this area. And again, this could happen here, it could happen on a theater site, and could happen in other areas. It really gives the city the ability to start having those conversations and attract investment into the area. Um, as Rob mentioned, great involvement by Citizens Advisory Committee. The state requires what they call meaningful public input. That has come through the advisory committee. There's been a few meetings with them, and it will also come later tonight in the public hearing that the full council will be having, um, that where we encourage public input, and that has helped us with the, the vision and the goals for this area. Rob mentioned the community meetings that helped him happen three or four years ago. We had tremendous turnout, tremendous input. So there's really a lot of interest in this neighborhood. Where do we go from here? Again, we're here to present to you, hold the public hearing tonight. Um, Rob mentioned the planning board has already taken their necessary vote on this plan. Uh, we hope to get it wrapped up and approved with your support uh, within the next month or two. And then it goes on to the State Department of Housing and Community Development for their final review and approval. They've already reviewed a draft report. We've gotten some of their initial comments, so we've incorporated a lot of their initial thoughts into the report you're seeing now. So we expect that to go relatively smoothly, but the state is the last one to approve the plan. Um, after it's approved, there is one more state step. It's another permit we have to get from the state, from the MEPA office. That's more of a process thing. It's not really a difficult permit to get but we do have to go through that process once the plan is approved. As I mentioned earlier, the city is looking into a district improvement financing program to help with the funding for portions of this project. And once you know funding is in place now or generated in the future, there's certainly the, the next step of de designing or engineering those solutions, especially the flooding issue. We know that's a major concern here we know development needs to take that into consideration when they're designing their buildings or site improvements and whatever the city can do to, to minimize the flooding problems will really help with investment in this area because it's one less thing that an investor needs to look into. So with that, we're open for questions, comments, and I'm gonna turn it back to Rob to moderate that. Thanks, Jeff. Mr. Stevens, Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> just um, from my point of view, after um, looking at some of the paperwork we have in front of us tonight, first of all, another you know, another great job in the chapter of revitalizing the city of Quincy. I think you covered a lot of things, everything uh, in the plan, and also uh, the Citizens Action Committee. And I want to recognize the President of the Chamber. Quincy, uh, Tim Cahill, who was a chairman. Um, you know, it's quite a lineup of folks that have been involved in the city for, for years and had, have had businesses in the city. And um, so it's a, another solid um, group who, who has approved this along with Richie Mead and the, and the planning board who signed off on it. So I think it's all positive things. I'd like to go to my colleagues on questions uh, just so we understand uh, tonight's <clears throat> fully the, the topic tonight that we will either um, keep in committee or approve um, and, and move on to the, to the council vote. But um, folks, any, any questions for Council Yang? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I just want to start by echoing our, Mr. Chairman's thoughts on just gratitude, right? I mean, this has been years in the process and um, as you all know, just from you know many conversations that we've had, it's it's really exciting, um, and I'm I'm really excited for this as well. I, but I do come in with the apprehension of just the experience in the downtown, personally, right on the business side of things, um, before I got involved on this side, and that was just engagement, um, but also participation opportunities. And so, I feel as though you all have had an open door for me whenever I've expressed those concerns for you, and then you've addressed them um, with you know significant engagement with the community, with business owners, uh, residents, at public meetings. Um, but more importantly than that, right, it's, it's, I think all of us know that the bulk of that area are AAPI-owned businesses with a lot of folks who maybe um, speak English as their second language or maybe even some staff members or manager on, managers on site um, aren't that proficient in English. And so the fact that you all have really just embraced that and provided 
engagement opportunities in languages, uh, multiple languages, is so important to me. And I just want to first off start by saying I'm, I'm very grateful and thankful for that. Um, and I know that you're continuing that effort as well. So thank you. Um, just a few questions and requests, if I could. So uh, just logistics stuff on the map. Um, when I was looking through this packet and it had the slide, I don't know what number it is, but the one with the red line and the light blue outline, um, you had explained that the red was for vacant properties, the blue is for the excessive parking lot area. Could we just add that to the legend there? I imagine that these plans will be posted somewhere online for the public to access, and it would be great if we could just add those two things in the legend so that when they're looking at the red and the light blue, they'll know uh, what that identifies. Um, the other request I have is, um, I know it's not request, but I'm just curious to see, and maybe we'll hear more from the Citizens Advisory Committee for two slides after that. Um, the slide that has a legend for intersection improvements and pedestrian improvements. Could you just give some background and context as to how you arrived um, on those areas for the intersection improvements and pedestrian improvements? Because I know that, you know, Beale Street ideally is going to be really walkable as well as like that side of Hancock Street where um, you've got Beach Street down to Elm. And so I'm curious as to know, again, like what was the thought process that led you to identifying those specific intersections? And then is there room obviously for adding potentially, you know, pedestrian improvement areas just in addition to that one that you have right now? Yeah, that's a good question, Councillor. Uh, and thank you for your uh, thoughts about all the work uh, that's been going on. Uh, as far as the streets and intersections we identified, it's, it's more of a kitchen sink. This is the very first plan. So we tried to highlight all of them. Um, you know, if there's some nooks and crannies that we missed, I'm sure we could make an adjustment to this map. But I believe our intention is, you know, all of the streets and um, intersections need to be looked at. Um, what's uh, going to further define this map, and uh, it was one of the last slides you saw, the uh, adoption of an urban renewal plan uh, does require the filing of a MEPA ENF. In there, we'll have its own transportation section. So that's where this, you know, plan starts to get a lot more detail will be the very next step, you know, the ENF filing. Uh, so uh, if you think of it as sort of a process and building, this is the base layer. And what we're trying to say is, you know, we want to look at everything. Um, you know, a, a, a term that's come up in municipal government a lot is, is complete streets, mass DOT. You know, they don't want you looking just at the roadways for cars. They want you to look at all uses of transportation. So um, I feel like, you know, that's how uh, transportation design and engineering works now, is looking at it all. So when we're identifying that green, it's not just how do we move cars faster, it's how do we move cars, uh, allow people to walk safely and cross intersections. It's, it's all of it, bicyclists, um, you know, all those folks. Right, so this is just the foundation and we can build those identifiers on top of it for a sort of later visuals, right? Great. Um, and so I just have, again, just like a lot of process questions. I know, again, this is just the very beginning, like he's a kitchen sink, right, style where it's building the foundation and then multiple bites of the apple will show us presentations that have um, more details and specifics. But as process wise, um, again, there's a lot of obviously buildings in here that have um, landlord owned like retailers, right? So you're necessarily dealing with the landlord and the retailers. And again, I just know from the other side of the experience, bless you, um, is that you can't disclose some things when it comes to the legal side. but Process-wise, could you just walk me through uh, what business owners and landlords should anticipate, you know, if and when this moves forward, you know, what's the next step for them, right? Like, I own a small business there. I know this meeting is happening, mm -hmm. right? If I'm curious as to, okay, but then what's next? Do I need to look for another location? Am I going to get relocated? Is this a year? Is this two years down the line? Could you just talk a little bit about that? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, you know, one thing that um, made this plan a little bit easier is our experiences in Quincy Center. Mm -hmm. So um, a lot of, you know, because we field a lot of those uh, calls, you know, from tenants, you know, with questions in Quincy Center. So uh, what you really got to get down to is what is the government action, right? And, and government can't act, you know, on its own. Um, you know, here in the city, we're a consolidated uh, planning community development department. It's the planning department, the city council, the mayor's office. So, uh, you know, for example, we identified a few areas of interest. If the city were to take any action in those areas, they'd have to be, you know, uh, in all likelihood advising uh, the council. There may be future uh, approvals required by the council for eminent domain, uh, for budgetary reasons, those types of things. Uh, so the government side, um, public actions, obviously, if we do construction projects, that'd be the normal notification in the neighborhood of roadway work or those types of things. Uh, I don't know if that helps answer your question a little bit on that. 
On the private sector side, that's a little bit more tied to the, the private sector way of doing business. Um, a lot of tenants have leases. I would suggest that, you know, look at a lot of your lease uh, language, um, but that's something that, uh, from a government perspective, we don't really get too involved with uh, yeah. until that owner comes forward and wants to work and work on an, uh, an urban renewal agreement with the city, you know, for new development. Okay. Uh, but again, that agreement, uh, in all likelihood, you know, we have to do things in, in a public process. Uh, folks would be forewarned uh, and would have an opportunity to, to comment or, or seek guidance or information. Right. Yeah. I mean, look, I, I appreciate you saying that there are um, so many different bodies of people who are involved in the process. No pun intended. I don't want there to be too many chefs in the kitchen to slow anything down. Yeah. Um, and, and trust, again, I've seen the work that you all have done over the last few years. Like, I, I trust that you're going to continue on with that level of engagement, if not increase it as things move forward. So like, it's just for me, it's just understanding the process of, you know, if folks hear that this is happening, right, they might sit in their business and say, well, I don't know if we're going to be here in two years. Should we talk to our landlord? Should we think about relocating? Right. And again, legally, I know that there are some conversations we can and can't have with those tenants. Right. But if folks are interested in finding out more, they can come directly to the planning board. Do you have a separate number or team set up for this? Like what what is the contact information? Well, that I mean, I, have I would to? say to you and to all counselors, have them contact me or, or Jim Patsy's directly. Um, I have my other colleague, Joe. Uh, Joe's uh, been with us now a few years. He's coming along. We're available. I'll I'll sit down and explain urban renewal to any business owner or tenant. Just what it is, but it, it, and I, I find myself explaining though government is on this piece, and you know if you're a, 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 a tenant in a building, you got to look back at your lease or work with your property owner. Okay, and then as this moves forward, again, do we do we plan on having a, a separate team within the planning department uh, where folks again can reach out as opposed to reaching out directly to the two of you? Every time somebody has a question, do you know what I mean? Like if we post this on the website and folks can look over the, you know, the course of however many years this takes to move forward, it'd be great if we can have a designated site where folks can go and say, okay, you know, we're a year into the project. What's next? What can I anticipate in this area? Um, maybe people are interested in buying homes, selling, whatever it may be, right? It's just, mm -hmm. it'd be great if there was like a one-stop shop for point of contact. And I guess it'd be helpful if I explained where this is coming from. I remember very, very clearly, um, and Mr. Walker might remember my very frantic phone calls, but you know, I'd walk into one of the restaurants and the water would be shut off because they're doing construction. And I, I might have known about the construction, but I didn't think that the water would be shut off. But the water was shut off because our city's old, right? We're, that's why we're redeveloping it and updating it. But folks didn't know that there was a water pipe there, right? So I'd walk out and you know, the poor guy on site with the hard hat would just be like, I, I, I don't know what to tell you. And they'd direct me to the guy in a suit with the hard hat. And they'd say, well, I don't know what to tell you. And they'd direct me to DPW. So you know what I mean? Like, there's a lot of folks that, you know, we got directed to. Whereas I think if this is going to happen here in the URTP and we can take those experiences um, and do better or keep doing the things we did well, it would have been great if there was like a, hey, there's one designated line for that. Just call this number and they can get you information on what's going on. So is there any thought to... And I guess this is a request as well, like maybe setting something like that up where we can have a one-stop shop for any questions related to construction, timeline, et cetera. Okay. Um, it, maybe it's a larger department question. Uh, the planning director, Patsy. Thank you. Um, I, I have worked with you many times, and I know the depth of the, uh, the detail that you draw off individual business owners, different stakeholders in the community. Um, the planning department... Um, is very capable of responding to any number of inquiries. There's uh, to, to suggest that, um, you know, we're not the BRA, I don't have hundreds of people, but we'll get back to people within a day or two uh, at the outside. Specific questions are actually easier to answer than the general overall plan because there's not so much timing. It's to your point, hey, my water is shut off, or I have an issue, and I haven't been able to get my vehicles into my driveway, whatever it is. That's a call directly to us, because we are linked to the Inspectional Services Department, hardwired. I can pick up the phone and have uh, you know, Mr. Duke on the phone in a minute. And the staff itself is, is up to speed for this. If you think about it, um, I'm not really concerned that we have Quincy Center going on with so many facets and that we're trying to introduce something into Wollaston. We're there. There's, uh, you know, it, it <clears throat> isn't just ourselves. Uh, 
you know, we have other staff members that will take calls. Sue Larisey, for instance, who you've spoken to in the past. We just need to hear from the public. Um, as many folks as want to give us a call, we'll handle it. And uh, we're not uncomfortable that we'll get overwhelmed because it hasn't happened yet, even in Quincy Center. Uh, and we've learned a lot from Quincy Center, to your point. And we now have uh, the experience of the URDP in Quincy Center, ENF in Quincy Center, the, you know, the funding sources like DEF in Quincy Center. So we have probably spoken and made ourselves available to every business owner in Wollaston. Uh, we encourage it. And uh, I can't think of uh, somebody right now that we haven't at least made the effort to reach out to. And to your point, some of them are trying to be private with their plans. Mm -hmm. So we also recognize that uh, part of our role is to have a conversation and not just get on the phone and say, hey, you want to hear what so-and-so else is doing? Mm -hmm. It's part of that trust that has been built in the neighborhoods and in uh, the business community. So we're very comfortable that we can handle that. Um, to tell you, you know the phone number I use, which is my cell phone number, so you can get me 24-7. Um, that's the same thing with Rob. It's the same thing with Joe. Uh, we're very comfortable handling the volume that we would expect from uh, Wollaston as we are ready to handle calls from North Quincy, from West Quincy, from point anywhere, uh, it's important to us to have that response time. And I'm very comfortable saying that, uh, you know, I'm not always going to take a day to get back to you, but uh, more often than not, we'll be able to handle it immediately, but get back to them in a day, two at the most. No, I appreciate that commitment. I mean, the fact that, you know, again, these folks can reach out to the leadership team at the planning department That's directly is, is phenomenal. So thank you for, what we for do. committing to that. Um, just two more questions, and then I will uh, pass it along. So. The, um, the plan also includes, you know, obviously the, the Wallace and T station. What are our conversations and or um, what's, what's our relationship with the T station right now and what we have to do with them? Because you all are phenomenal. I will publicly say I cannot stand working with the T at the MBTA. So how much do we have to work with them and, and sort of moving forward and redeveloping the area around the T station? What do we have to look for? Um, are there any delays that we're anticipating with them because they move so slowly. I, but what's the conversation with them been like? I'm going to pitch this to Mr. Walker, who has a pretty much a, uh, he's got the bat phone. He can call over to the T immediately. But uh, Chris, you might want to yeah, pick thank, this up. Thank you. Through you, Mr. Chairman, if I can. Um, obviously, Council, we've been involved with the T at North Quincy. Um, we're currently involved with the T at Quincy Center. Um, there are some moving parts there. The legal framework of what may happen uh, at the station is sort of being done right now. Um, they know um, the mayor has a seat on the board of directors now, uh, so it's it's very clear. And the governor has made it uh, very clear that uh, Quincy Center T Station and Wollaston T Station are priorities for redevelopment. Uh, there has not been anything specific, concrete relative to Wollaston Center, other than it's it's going to happen because they. Uh, take it very methodically, uh, one by one, essentially. So at North Quincy, it was, we'll get through North Quincy, and then we'll talk about Quincy Center, and now we're in Quincy Center, and when we get to a certain point in Quincy Center, we're going to talk about Wallison Center. But I think it's fair to anticipate that we would have the same sort of framework that we had in North Quincy that we expect to have in Quincy Center as part of Wallison Center, essentially an RFP process where the T will put out in collaboration with the city, uh, request for proposals for development, uh, transit-oriented development, uh, and then we're off and running. Uh, the bureaucracy that takes place after that point mm -hmm. uh, is nothing that I can't speak to, you can speak to, it's a, it's a uh, state agency. Um, you know, as, as you well know, uh, nothing moves fast enough uh, for, for, for the mayor and, and our administration when it comes to some of these things, but um, you know, we have a number of assurances that Wallace and Center is absolutely on the map for being targeted for a, a trans-oriented development. It's a perfect spot. It's straight out of the encyclopedia for what a transit-oriented development spot wants to look like. It's currently mm -hmm. an underused spot with surface parking. Like, let's go. Yeah, great. Thank you. No, I just I hope when it comes to that, I mean, like, again, 
the amount of work that you all put into this. Um, you can still hear me, right? Yeah. That's right. No, no, you're fine. Um, I just, I, I feel like if they're not going to help you, then they should get out of your way. So that's that's kind of my sentiment around just making sure that, you know, if there's anything we can do to help with that, please let us know. But um, I also want to know, one of the slides had talked about um, there's going to be a diff for this area that comes in front of us as well. Do we have any sense of a budget for what this diff looks like? If there isn't, that's fine. Because again, to Rob's point, this is very, like, very, very baseline right now, right? But just curious, do we have a sense of what that diff request may look like? Yeah, I'll grab this one. Um, yeah, the, the, there's a, an initial model based off of uh, a couple of projects that have already been approved. Uh, we're going to uh, go back and sort of explore a little bit more of what could happen. Uh, we don't have uh, an estimate on that mm -hmm. um, of, of what it could be. There's some uh, engineering or planning estimates found within the urban renewal plan for some of the actions. That's over the lifespan of uh, the plan, which is a 20-year urban renewal plan. Um, so, uh, you know, there's some numbers in there, but, you know, those are spread out over 20 years. Our thought is, um, uh, you know, once we're into the MEPA ENF phase, uh, if this council is so kind to uh, move forward with this plan, that that in, uh, additional engineering will help further refine what the city's expenses are and Hopefully, we get private investment that starts to come forward where we can start to target a first round of um, expenditures, essentially. Uh, but that diff does require the city council approval. Um, I, my recommendation to the administration would be that uh, the diff plan goes in with a, an initial funding request. Gotcha. Okay. And then um, for the, to the chairman's point, the, the order that's in front of us tonight, or the request that's in front of us tonight, is really to codify everything that you have done up until this point. I, I mean, it's, it, I want to just be clear that this, this request doesn't say, okay, now go and take any building you want, right? So what then is the, pro if this were to move forward to say, okay, we're codifying this conversation, we're definitely going to create this, you know, this district, we're going to start moving forward with, you know, everything that you outlined here tonight. If and when it comes up that there is a parcel you want to start moving forward with and having conversations about takings, what does that look like? And when do you anticipate that might start to happen? Right, that cannot happen until we get the MEPA certificate. So uh, that'll be a few months uh, to organize and submit. So, um, you know, looking at the calendar, I, I would think we're in the fall uh, by the time, you know, anything uh, legitimate would come before this board outside of the DIF. I think the idea is uh, DIF uh, and the MEPA ENF through the summer into the fall and, and we'll be back before the council. Um, and then uh, hopefully we'll be uh, off and running at that point. So at that point, if you, when you say back in front of us, that's if you, again, have identified spaces that you are looking to take, uh, that you'd bring that back in front of us to look at and approve before moving forward, correct? Exactly. Great. Okay. That's all I have. Again, I just want to say thank you again for all of the hard work that you all have done. Um, I can't say it enough. I, the fact that you have gone above and beyond to make sure that business owners, residents are engaged um, and also have participation opportunities in um, multiple languages is, is huge. And I think that you model... Um, what many cities and towns should do when it comes to what engagement should mean. So I really appreciate that. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Council. Uh, Chair recognizes Councilor DeBona. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, thank you for your presentation tonight. I appreciate you guys coming in. We're finally at this this phase of the uh, of the Wallace and Center re renewal plan. Um, if, if you took Quincy and you said, "What is the middle? What is the core? Your your dead center, Wallace and Center." Um, is in the middle of the city. Um, we've obviously, obviously have done a lot of expansion here with the downtown right next to us here, and we've done a lot in the North Quincy section as well as Quincy Adams, which is underway now as well with the MBTA situation. Um, this is an important area. Um, ever since I've been on here since 2016, that particular neighborhood without the walls and theater has been screaming for some type of, of growth. Um, Basically, um, as you know, we, we've done a, uh, over time, over the last few years, it's been a lot of infrastructure improvements with MBTA doing the handicap accessibility. They've done their best for the flooding, but it's very difficult in those sections. Quincy Housing Authority has done their part with the Clay Street situation. They've done a lot of um, investment over there in that particular area, Clay. The streets and sidewalks as well um, on ours. Even Blackwood Pharmacy, which was all boarded up with, with stuff up, has kind of developed into some type of restaurant and it's looking a little bit better over there. 
Um, obviously, we're seeing a spike of uh, redevelopment of, of housing, and the new thing is the mixed use. Um, basically, my question to you, obviously, is um, what's the overall marketing plan you're looking to do? Are you marketing for the fact of, listen, we've had a Walson Theater here before. We're looking to have some arts. These are the proposed meetings that we've had um, previously, and this is what the folks of the city want. Um, the pitch, obviously, is with the downtown. The pitch is, great, you want to do all this residential, but what does that help the folks that are living here presently? And that's the biggest question of the Walston area is, what are you going to do for the folks that are living here presently? What type of businesses, what type of um, restaurants, what type of storefronts are you guys going to be marketing as well as this development? So a combination of blending it all together. Um, so what, what do you think is the, the plan? I mean, you know, back in 2015 and 16, it was the West of Chestnut took the, the lead here in downtown. And then parcel by parcel, we've built up and look what it is now with the Kilroy Square and the farmer's market's back and all these different um, things that the folks of Quincy, the residents and the citizens of Quincy can enjoy, um, not just the new people coming in. So that's, that's the main topic. What is... What's your overall marketing plan and what are you gonna do for the folks that are existing that live here today? Yeah. Um, well, we went to the community a few years ago and we asked a lot of those wide open questions. You know, what do folks wanna see? Uh, back at those uh, planning uh, charrettes we held at the Central Middle School. And a lot of that information we do have um, and collected and provided on the city's website through the planning department under Wollaston. And I would sure hope folks looking to invest into Wollaston would take a hard look at some of those source documents and get a sense of what the community's looking for. Um, you know, there was a comment we showed the 2131 Beale Street project that, um, you know, we showed some of the retail spaces. Uh, you know, they're all under a thousand square feet because that's some of the things we heard from the, um, from the neighborhood, uh, from the Citizens Advisory Committee, from the workshops is a lot of the new commercial is just too big and I got a small shop. Where are the small shops for you know startups? And seeing those six spaces, there's a, a larger one on the corner, but five are all just moderately sized uh, storefronts. We think um, you know unlocking the mixed use. Right now, mixed use isn't uh, you know fully allowed, but in special districts, you know doing the commercial on first floor, allowing for upper story, it could be residential or. Uh, it, it could be uh, continued on commercial uh, and get a full office building. It's just allowing those land uses to happen and, and happen with support from the community. So that's what the urban renewal plan does. It, it brings in you know, the public sentiment. Um, then it brings in land use strategies and tools that the city could use. Then it, it puts the city uh, uh, in a position where they have to analyze all of the infrastructure systems. So a new business coming in understands there's some constraints. Uh, but they also see the opportunity. So I really look at the plan itself as the first marketing plan. I think a lot of you councilors have been uh, with uh, in this position for some time and recognize that we're on the Fifth Amendment to the Quincy Center plan. Um, in a lot of ways, you know, uh, as this plan develops and that market develops, there's opportunities to uh, revise and amend as we go and adjust to uh, whatever the market uh, is, is occurring in the market. As we mentioned, there's a lot of the big boxes are, are not um, uh, really coming forward as much in our city. I think the North Quincy target is, is the first real urban uh, sized uh, big box that we received. Could one fit in Wollaston? Not sure, uh, but at least uh, the city mm -hmm. has uh, permitted one and we have one in use. So again, that's sort of building on that momentum of, of what's happening throughout the city and throughout the region. Um, and you know, it, just beginning with uh, the plan um, as the first step. The particular area of Walsh and Center obviously is a very walkable walking area, biking as well. Um, obviously, a lot of the folks out there are looking for more trees to be planted as well. I mean. I and mean, we had this issue with our predecessor in Ward 2 that didn't have anything from Four River Bridge all the way down and we came in and put a whole bunch of trees in. I want to say 30 to 50 trees and right down the, the corridor into the, the Four River Bridge. We, we kind of have to do the same type of um, investment with the streets in this particular area once it gets a little more dense. Um, 
Obviously, we've done infrastructure improvements that will allow you to walk from, from the Wallison Center T Station all the way down to Wallison Beach. A lot of those sidewalks have done a great job. So the infrastructure is obviously, some of it is done, um, but we obviously have to tailor in as the investments go, parcel by parcel. I, as you can see is uh, what we've done right next door here, and what parcel by parcel getting things done and going to the next segment. Um, do you foresee uh, previous developers that have done downtown uh, or and done other sections of the city doing um, some, inve some investment in the Wallison Center area? I would like to think so. They made that decision for Quincy Center. So um, I, I couldn't speak for developers, though. Um, but to your trees piece, um, you know, if I could, you know, go back to this slide, um, and I'd like to reemphasize those two dark green areas, one near the Wollaston Theater and one near the Newport Ave. Um, those are sneaky important dark green patches because what that's saying is uh, the city, uh, as it's shown in Quincy Center with the General's Park, with Kilroy Square, with Hancock Common, believes there is a next generation public space, public realm, uh, for the benefit of the Wollaston residents. And, we're attaching it to two areas, most likely to get development first. So that could take the form of larger sidewalks that could handle uh, tree planting beds, or that could uh, take the space of a, a nice public access walkthrough from one side of the street to the other, even though you're on private land. But those are some of the mm -hmm. discussions we're looking to have with whoever comes forward with development in those areas, is what are you gonna do to enhance the public realm uh, it's public space. It, it could be setbacks, wider sidewalks, and those types of things. Lastly, we talked about the mitigation of flooding. Obviously, you know, the Walson T Station, they tried to do their very best with trying to get the mitigation. It's a tough area, I'll be honest with you. And I think the biggest pitch you're going to have to give to some of the residents that live in that area is once this development comes in, it'll mitigate some of the, the flooding that's happening in that area. I mean, that's a very important aspect. We talk about trees. We talk about mitigation of flooding. But... That's a topic that I consistently hear um, in that enterprise by the CVS there where there's a pool of water that sits in there by Fleming and Fleming and, and Clay Street area. I mean, it's, it's, it's just like a little lake over there, you know? So yeah. Well, yeah. you have your hands full, obviously, but I'm, I'm looking forward to the process here. Yeah, we, we sure do. So the city engineer's office has uh, deployed uh, the flood inundation modeling to analyze the whole Wollaston district, uh, down, all the way down to Wollaston Beach. Um, so we got all of the um, uh, drains mapped, we got their age and their condition. So we'll be looking to uh, moving forward on the design, we go through alternatives analysis. Uh, what type of infrastructure upgrades? Is this simply upsizing pipes? Or uh, we believe uh, that Wollaston sits in a little bit of a bowl, we might be looking at uh, some form of pump station. Uh, we've stated that in our previous remarks. We don't have that design. The, the engineering alternatives analysis is that step is, is it probably going to occur over the summer and into the fall uh, to figure out where that goes or do we even have to do one. But we're essentially looking from Wollaston all the way down to the beach. It's not just Wollaston Center uh, to address that flooding issue. I'm going to end with this. Is Obviously, we had the fire on the other side next to the Quincy Fire Department in that particular area, the Wollaston Station. And that's a blighted property, so we need to obviously revital that, revitalize that particular area. But, you know, all this, this particular section is very close to the T-Station. It's, it's, it looks to be a walkable, bike, bicycling type of area where people can, can walk around and bicycling and then uh, not even have a vehicle. So I'm looking forward to the process. I'm glad you guys are in front of us tonight. I've been waiting a long time. Um, folks are waiting and waiting and waiting, but here we are at the table, so let's get moving. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councilor. Any other Councilors? I recognize Councilor Harris. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, um, Chairman McCarthy. Um, I heard thrown around earlier tonight about the North Quincy project. And I remember it was in my first year, the beginning, and you talk about a project that was put in front of me, not being in politics, uh, just starting out. I was petrified, but I knew that it was probably the right thing to do in that area. And guess what? It was. 
Nobody has called me and said I made a mistake. Nobody has called me and said um, you did the wrong thing. We, I, I just took a, a, a tour of one of the final, with, with COVID, I didn't get to see a lot of what was going on. I was able to take a tour with my, co with my counterpart here, and uh, Anthony, and uh, I was, you know, I was amazed at, at how good the transit-orientated projects are, and when you do it right, you do it right. So I am very confident. Uh, I, uh, and a lot of folks know that I work for the post office. I was the manager of the Wollaston Post Office before I was, well before I was the manager of the Quincy Post Office, which unfortunately I wish I was still there, but I'm not. Um, but uh, that's, that's an area that um, has needed this since 15 years ago. So um, I'm all in and I'm sure, um, uh, I'm sure a lot of uh, the folks here uh, agree with me. So. I'd like to make a motion to approve if that could take place to get it out of committee. So a, a motion of, um, what is it, the uh, positive recommendation? Is that correct? Yeah. So yes. a motion by Councillor Harris. Any comments on the motion? Just a point of privilege as chairman. Um, this uh, is for the layout. I just want to make sure that folks understand that the, what will approve, at least bringing it out of committee if it does get approved, uh, is the district that's laid out in most of the slides, like the slide that's up on the screen right now. Yes. Am I, am I yes. clear in saying that, Rob? Okay. So this would be a motion to approve the Wollaston Urban Revitalization District as we see it. And uh, all those in favor? Oh, on the motion. Sorry, I know. I'm late on the Sorry, motion. I know, I know, I know. I, I, you just, you just made, um, you just reminded me that I wanted to clarify as well. To your point, uh, none of this will include any decisions on height requirements for buildings or parking requirements or anything. Correct. This plan does contain the certificate of consistency review process, the expedited review through the planning board. To set the limits for for height requirements. Correct. Okay, could you just, what, how, many, what, how many stories is that that we're looking at? I had it, I had it tabbed out. Um, You're so close, Mr. Chairman. I, just, I wanted to just ask no, this one good question. Quite, excellent Thanks. question. So those choosing to um, pursue an urban renewal project, uh, six stories along Newport Ave. Gotcha. Okay. Six stories at the Wollaston Theater site. Six to ten stories at the CVS parcel. Uh, the Housing Authority building was right next door and then um, green space and key locations. So we called out um, essentially three areas uh, that uh, I, I think the current business e zoning is mm -hmm. six stories anyhow. So it's really that CVS parcel. We uh, floated the possibility of going to 10 stories at that uh, one uh, general location. But the six stories, I mean, when you first brought this in front of us um, years ago, that, that hasn't changed, right? It was six stories then too, wasn't it? It was, okay, just wanted to make sure. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah. Okay. So uh, we had a motion by Mr. Uh, by Councillor Harrison. On the motion, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? The ayes have it. Thank Thanks, you. Rob. Uh, I'm going to recess right now from the Ordinance Committee and go to the public hearing for the Wollaston Urban Revitalization District uh, that we just spoke about. Uh, the public hearing uh, will begin right now at 7 o'clock. Uh, as I did earlier, I want to recognize President of the Chamber of Commerce, Jim Cahill, and uh, past school committee woman and good friend Joanne Bragg, who was both on the Citizens Advisory Committee, who I, I think did a great job. And I'll open uh, the public hearing up. Uh, for those who uh, want to come up and speak uh, in favor, uh, we'll do it in two sections. And this will be in favor. Come forward. If you don't want to come up, there are sheets in the back that you can sign uh, in regards in favor or against. But right now, if anybody wants to come up, uh, in favor. Mr. Cahill. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Councilors, thank you very much. Appreciate the opportunity to speak before you on behalf of the Citizens Advisory Committee. And I do want to recognize those members. Um, some are here, some couldn't make it, but uh, they all came to every meeting that we had. Um, as you said, Joanne Bragg, 
Daniel Conley, Evangeline Earl, John Cohane, Bob LaRocca, LaRocca, Kathleen Lau, Jennifer Orman, and Renee Yasiliman. We're all members, along with myself, um, of the uh, Citizens Advisory Committee, um, assisted quite ably by Mr. Fatsies, Mr. Stevens, as well as Mr. Frazier, uh, helping us all get through this. We had three meetings, March 20, March of two in March of 2021, and one recently this past month, this past, a lot, couple weeks ago in May of this year. And as was stated um, already, um, basically what the CAC, CAC supports is the strategies of the urban, deve urban renewal development uh, part project. Uh, expedited permitting, as Mr. Stevens just said, for mixed use and some greater density of development. Uh, district improving financing to enable public improvements, which is very important to the um, Citizens Advisory Committee. Uh, targeted intervention in highlighted areas, which you've all seen um, and talked about, and public infrastructure improvements, including a pump station, roadway, and streetscape improvements. Those were all extremely important to the CIC, CAC, sorry. Um, we also wanted to make sure that you all know that we, um, we wanna make sure that adequate parking remains a priority in projects going forward. Um, independently owned businesses are prioritized for retail space. Um, we we um, support 100% the need for increased public space in the district, parks especially, um, and the importance of building aesthetics, um, uh, facade improvement, not just for new business, but for the current um, businesses that won't be developed as we go forward. Um, so the members of the CAC request that the City Council continues to adhere to these to the inclusionary zoning ordinance as well, and that we be updated if this plan were to change, that we be notified so that we can meet again. But on behalf of the entire Citizens Advisory Committee that did work, and many of these people worked much more diligently than I because they were part of the charrettes um, and part of the process even before I got involved, um, are 100% in favor of this and want me, want me on their behalf to express that. Um, so that we can move forward with this. And we thank you for the vote you've taken. And if there's another vote to approve it, move it forward, we would be much appreciated. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. Hey, nice Joey. to see you all again. Uh, I support the plan. Um, we worked on it. There were several key issues that we looked at. Um, which I know is in the forefront of your minds, such as parking, more space. We talked about a senior center, community center, which Ward 5 does not have. It would be nice to be able to have one in there. And Jim Fatsies and Rob Stevens were very valuable to the committee in providing, answering any questions, providing information to all of us on anything that we needed. Obviously, affordable housing, you know, we got a in-depth understanding of how that committee works. Um, parking, as, as Mr. Cahill just said, and uh, I support the plan and appreciate your support of it. Thank you. Thank you, Julian. Could I get a name and address, please? Sure. Uh, good evening, counselors. My name is Bob LaRocca. I'm a member of the CAC, 40 Oakland Avenue, just outside of, of the region. I just want to say I'm very supportive of this. Um, I really want to thank Jim and his team, Rob and Joe and, and Tim. Um, all the information was really laid out clearly to us, and I think this is really exciting. And I just want to say, you know, my, when my wife and I moved here in 2017, we looked at Wallston Center as a place that really has a ton of potential. And I think that's what's really echoed in all the meetings that we had. And Tim and Joanne um, captured, I think, all the, the major points, but I just want to make one plug for you know, what we can do to support small and independent businesses um, through this redevelopment. I understand that's largely market driven, but um, I think there's really, you know, just great opportunity there. Um, and I think that can, you know, continue to have Quincy be um, a nice commercial and entertainment hub for the area. So very supportive of this, and I want to thank the committee for their job. And if there's anything else that we at the CAC can do, um, we're happy to do it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Bob. Anyone else like to come forward and speak in favor? Okay. 
Paulette Park closed. Now we'll have anyone who wants to come up and opposed to the Wallison plan. Those that are opposed. Proposed or undecided. Mm -hmm. Independent. I'm for with conditions, okay? Um, John Roderfield, 62 Grunwald Road. One of the main things I'm concerned about is borrowing in debt. You know, if you want to look at charts, Quincy has become the fifth worst city in debt over the last, since 2010. We we're maybe like number 30 in 2010. So that's one chart we don't want to be first in. So we don't want to see taxpayers' dollars going into this like we've seen that's gone into Quincy Center, into the downtown diff. When money is asked, um, from Mr. Stevens, when they ask, I'm not sure what they're going to call this, um, the Wollaston diff, they're going to come up and they're going to ask the city council for money. I think when they ask you for money, um, just like when they're asking for the diff money for the, the new Quincy Center one, they're going to start asking it more itemized, exactly what they want the money for. They want this for the pump station. They want this for going for the streets. They want this for this parcel. We have to make sure that the developers put more teeth into this. We also have to make sure that the development that's going on over there, we have enough podium stick development going on in the city. Okay, I expected nicer development. I, I stood up here, I was one of the only people in the city that stood in favor of um, Fox Rock up at the hospital because they promised they were gonna build nice luxury apartments. Okay, and what I'm seeing up there is stuff just like Deco, stuff like they've been building, just stick over podium stuff. I don't want stuff that's gonna to burn to the ground. If that stuff ever catches fire, that's not safe. And that stuff only has a life of 30 to 50 years. We wanna build some brick structures, we wanna build some steel, we wanna build some nice structures. Right across on Clay Street, 80 Clay Street, maybe like another affordable housing place that maybe the city owns right across the street from that would be a great idea. I mean, if you go into 80 Clay Street, that building you know, um, is old. We need some new affordable housing for the people. So when you give money, $100 million for Diff 1 of Wollaston, some money should be allocated towards affordable housing directly. We can't depend on the affordable housing trust fund to take care of Wollaston. We have to make sure that the counselors um, take care of Wollaston. We have to, Quincy is not affordable right now because of the development that we've allowed within the city. So. Um, Wallison does need a facelift. Um, the, you know, um, I saw at Newcomb Farms, um, they recently approved a project to put like 80 units or something there. So we don't need this. We could just go parcel by parcel and we could still develop Wallison really good. So by doing this and approving this right now, basically what you're saying is that all the other people you really can't complain about the development, that the development's gonna happen. So um, the way I've been looking at it, I, I think that you would approve this stuff even whether this variance, that's what I look at this. I look at this as like a super variance that you're proposing and you gotta put more in it for the taxpayers, okay? These are all about enriching the developers and I don't think we need to enrich the developers anymore because if you go down and you look at all those parcels of the people that own that land, that land isn't gonna be changing hands anymore. All that land is already owned by people and the people that own that land are waiting to develop that and they're waiting for this to get passed. And um, I will finish up. And, um, but basically, like I said, it's, you're our protection, the city council. You guys have to protect us. Mayor Koch can propose whatever he wants, but he can't get anything through unless sometimes five of you, sometimes six of you actually approve and put your stamp on it. So I want you to put your stamp to change that stamp and change what that material that stamp is made out of, okay? That's what I want. I want that stamp to be made out of the material that's the backbone of the taxpayers, not the rubber from my tires. Thank you. Yes, sir.
So my name is Rocky Chan, and I'm a lifelong resident of Wollaston uh, for over 40 years. Uh, I'm not sure if it was addressed in the previous hearings, but I'd like to know about when you finish the reconstruction, which I agree, we need it, but what about the mom and pop shops that are currently in Wallace and Stenner? I know some of them, and they are Wallace and residents with their kids going to Central or to Beechwood. Um, what allowances are you gonna have other than paying fair price to take the land, take their lease, but then you're gonna, where, where are they gonna go after that? That's my question. Are they gonna be able to come back in and bid on their previous storefront? Or are they gonna, are we gonna get like these big name rich, you know, high priced restaurants to come in? Well, public hearing, we're just gonna listen to the comments from the folks, we can mm -hmm. follow up and take notes, all of us, and get back to you on, on some of your questions. We just want to hear the, the points, the positive or the negative. So, so we won't get into answering questions tonight. Okay. So the other thing is I am concerned about the traffic. I live three, out, I live three blocks away, and I'm kind of scared that if there's not enough adequate parking, that there will be more traffic jams, and they'll just be gridlocked. And people who use my street as a shortcut, and since Marlboro and all of the other streets like Elm, they're straightaways, we're gonna get cars going through there at least 30 to 40 miles an hour. And more and more the houses around my area, they're being bought by young families with children. So again, I approve of it, but some concerns. Thank you. We got a minute. No. What do you want to do, Rob? No. No. Anybody else? Oh, okay. All right, Rob. Sit down, Rob. <laughs> I'm going to close the public hearing at 7:15. Um, thank you very much. Good evening, folks. 7:15. <clears throat> uh, we have a, a public hearing. Um, I'd like to call to order. Uh, the Monday, uh, May 16th, 715 public hearing, Council Order 2022-069, Grant of Location, Mass Electric, Verizon, Kendrick Ave. Uh, at this point, I'd like to ask anyone wishing to speak in favor or opposition to come to the podium, please state your name and address. If you do not wish to, uh, um, if you do not wish to speak, but would like to support or oppose, um, record, please sign in the, uh, on the sheet in the back on the table uh, at the back of the chamber. So anybody in favor or opposition of this, um, this council order? Bueller, okay, seeing none, seeing none, um, no further uh, public comment, uh, I'll close the hearing at, uh, 716, record. We'll be back at 720 for um, the council order 2022 070 granted location at Fax and Park. Thank you. Okay, good evening, folks. Uh, I'm calling to order the um, the, again, the May 16, 2720 uh, public hearing, Council Order 2022 70, Grandel Location, Mass Electric, Fax, and Park Road. At this point, anybody wishing in favor or opposition could come to the podium, state your name and address. If you don't wish to speak but would like to support or oppose, uh, recorded, um, please sign in on the sheet on the table at the back of the chambers. So, seeing that, uh, does anybody want to speak in favor or against? Please come to the podium. Okay, seeing no further public comment, I'd like to close uh, the public hearing at still 720, thank you.
We'll be back in five more minutes for the final um, public hearing with uh, National Grid. Thank you. I'd like to call to order the Monday, May 16th, 725 public hearing 2022-071, Grano Location, National Grid Gas, uh, Barham uh, Ave. Uh, at this point, uh, I'd like to ask anybody wishing in, uh, to speak in favor or opposition to come to the podium, state your name and address. If you don't wish to speak but would like your support or opposition recorded, please sign in on the sheet on the table at the back of the chamber. So, is there anybody who would like to speak in favor or opposition? Okay. Seeing not further public comment, I'd like to uh, end this public hearing at 725. Thank you. We will be resuming the, uh, we'll be starting the uh, regular council meeting um, in five minutes. Thank you. I'd like to call the, the meeting to order. Um, City Council meeting Monday, May 16th, 2022, 7.30 p.m. Mr. Clerk, please call the roll. Councilman Geronico. Present. Council Kane. Present. Council Harris. Present. Council Liang. Council Mahoney. Council McCarthy. Present. Council Palmucci. Present. Council Phelan. Present. President Tabona. Present. We have a Six quorum. Minutes, yes. We have a quorum. Um, and we have Council Liang here Council as well. Liang. Uh, can we get a moment of silence? Please use it as you wish. You can, yes, yeah, stand, I'm sorry. Please salute the flag and the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, Liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Mr. Clerk, please read the open meeting law. Pursuant to the open meeting law, any person may make an audio or video recording of this public meeting or may transmit the meeting throughout any medium. Attendees are therefore advised that such recordings or transmissions are being made, whether perceived or unperceived, by those present and are deemed acknowledgeable, acknowledged and permissible. Before we go into recess and go back into the ordinance meeting for our municipal light um, plant um, presentation, I just want to say that Quincy uh, Climate Action Network is not able to make the meeting due to some COVID exposures and that we'll be postponing it to a later date. So that'll, I know that was on the agenda and we'll be giving a later date. So with that, we're going to put this into recess. We're going to go back into ordinance and then we'll come right back into this regular City Council meeting. Thank you. I'd like to bring uh, the ordinance committee back into session. At, uh, 734, uh, <clears throat> we had just finished the Wollaston Urban Redevelopment Plan, and I'd like to go to uh, order 2022-064, the establishment of municipal lighting plan, and go right to Mr. Walker. Through you, Mr. Chairman, thank you very much. Uh, as you mentioned, the item on this evening's agenda would be the first of several steps taking necessary to form a municipal light plant which would support um, the ongoing process of creating our own broadband internet service for our city's residents. Um, just to take everybody back just a little bit, um, obviously we want to thank uh, Councilor Kane uh, for his, uh, the amount of time and effort that he's put into this together in collaboration, uh, going back now several years, working through the planning and uh, getting stuff off the ground, and it's a, it's a very complicated, uh, long process, a lot longer than I'm sure Council Kane would like, but, um, you know, this is something that was driven by this body early on, uh, and we're continuing to make progress. 
Um, this particular vote tonight, I just want to be clear, this does not create a municipal light plant for the city of Quincy. This is step one of three that we would need to do. Um, this law goes back to the 1800s in Massachusetts. This was essentially the law that allowed municipalities uh, during that time to create their own municipal light plants when electricity first started. Uh, the law was amended at some point in the 20th century when telecommunications came into play. Uh, so any municipality that wants to run its own electric utility or provide uh, telecommunication services is required to go through this pretty substantive process to create its own municipal light plant. Um, through this process, uh, as I mentioned, this is, this is sort of the preliminary vote. This is the first vote. Um, it does not create the department. Um, this body would then have to come back, vote a second time uh, in a subsequent fiscal year, likely next fiscal year if we move forward on this process. And then it would go to the voters of the city in a referendum or a special city election to be finally approved. So Councilor Kane and, and, and the administrative team and our consultants, we're sort of looking at this as belts and suspenders. Uh, there's been no firm determination at this point whether we actually need to form this municipal light department and take that step, that final step. Uh, there's some legal theories out there uh, and some precedent that broadband may not require us going through this component of state law. So we're looking at that, um, but while that process is going forward, and we could also not have a municipal entity operating the system. We could contract it out to a, a third party provider as well. So there are a number of options on the table. None of those options have been selected at this point, but when we get to that point where we're ready to come with a full plan and a build out, we wanna be ready to pull that second and third trigger uh, when the time comes. So that's why we're before you this evening uh, to get this first preliminary vote. Again, not creating the department, just setting us up to create the department when that time comes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Walker. Uh, Councilor Kane. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and uh, thank you to Mr. Walker, especially to the mayor for his uh, support in this project. We have been working on this for four years now, which is hard to believe that we've been up here for so long talking about it. Um, you know, this project is a direct result of uh, resident requests, right? So this is a project that, uh, number one issue that I still hear about to this day, people are asking uh, on a regular basis, where's the municipal broadband project stand? And so, you know, it's an exciting project with um, many implications to advance the city in a number of ways, technologically speaking, uh, creating greater access uh, for to the digital economy for those who might not currently have it at affordable rates with a higher quality service. Uh, it has very strong implications for telework, which is currently uh, you know, much greater situation that's taken place after COVID. And we heard such awful stories of people being jacked up on their prices and their, uh, because of bandwidth uses for multiple users at home. And this will allow for um, solutions to that. Um, it's been exciting to look at areas of the city that we can potentially deploy. And we're also looking at uh, potential solutions around um, providing lower and moderate income families with access through state funding, which is currently available, widely available, which is exciting to uh, to, to think about as well. So um, I've been grateful for the support of my colleagues. I ask for your continued support uh, on this project um, and I look forward to, to seeing it through over the next year or so. Uh, motion to approve, please. Motion made by Councillor Kane. Any comment on the Councillor Phelan? Thank you, Mr. Chairman, through you. Um, I'm in a great support of this. I think this is a great thing. Um, it's something that you know, I haven't been on as long as uh, my colleague, Councilor Kane, but it's something I have heard since the day I ran for office. So it is something that's out there, in particular with the pandemic, it became even bigger. So I think what we're doing is we're providing choice. We're providing choice here for the residents. And anytime you somebody has a monopoly and you have two clear choices, it will drive down prices, it's simple economics. So I think this is a great step um, I'd like to have it here next month, but that's not going to happen. But I think all the, the pe all the people I've talked to are great, greatly in support of this, and I, I enthusiastically support this, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Any other comments from any other councillor? <coughs> so a motion made by Councillor Kane. All those in favor? Say aye. Opposed? And the ayes have it. Thank you, Councillor Kane. Um, and that brings the ordinance uh, meeting to a close at 740. 
Uh, I'll turn it back over to uh, President DeBona for the City Council meeting. It's now 7.40 and we're back from recess into the regular scheduled city council meeting. And Matt, uh, Mr. Mr. Clerk, first item on the agenda. First item on the agenda is 2002-072 Appropriations 2022 Capital Improvement Plan. We have a motion to move it into fine. We have a, mo uh, a motion made by Council Liang to move it into finance. We have a second by Council Palmucci. Any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. Motion carries, it's going into Finance Committee and also advertised. Um, next item on the agenda, uh, Mr. Clerk. Next item on the agenda is 2002, uh, 2022-073, order land. Wait the reading. <laughs> Wait the reading. <laughs> if I could on the, oh, you turn my microphone. You're up. <laughs> I could, do I have permission to talk? <laughs> Very confused. Yeah. Newton's know, really new, messing new, everything new up. If Nikki tonight. was here, it would be very smooth, but it's Newton's fault. We can Council play. Palmucci, you have the floor. Thank you. Um, this was uh, an order of taking that was on the agenda uh, on the, on the, at the last meeting uh, and due to a um, voting tabulation uh, error, it's on the agenda now so that given that it's a, a, a taking, we wanted to um, be 100 percent sure that it was done right. So. Um, I would move that this go to committee with the other takings that were on the agenda last week. Motion made by Council Palmucci to put it into committee, which is Finance Committee. Is that correct? I think so, yeah. yeah. And then um, I, get a, I get a second by Council Liang. Any, any discussion on this motion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. Motion carries. Put it into Finance. Yeah, oh, Mr. Mr. Council Phelan. Um, I would like to, to make consent on the um, the order, the capital improvement plan. I know I thank Councilor Yang for putting it in, but I believe they have three separate orders. And, okay. and to advertise, you have to advertise three separate ones, if I'm not mistaken. So I'd like, in, if I could ask unanimous consent to take up that item again. Motion made by Councilor Phelan to take up the item at... Um it's A, B, and C. It's 2022-72 is an A, B, and C. So we have to have separate um, votes on those. Votes, and they need to be advertised separately. Yep, and they all need to be advertised. So I'm going to uh, motion made by Council Phelan. Do I have a second to go back? Second, second, by second made Yang. by Council Yang. Any discussion on this to go back and vote on these items? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. We're going to go right back into these votes. Okay. Thank you, Councilor Phelan. Uh, Mr. Um, Chief, Mr. President, I'd like to uh, take item 2022-072A, appropriation of $15 million for an animal shelter, and I'd request that that be motion to Finance Committee and advertise. Motion made by Councilor Phelan um, to put into Finance Committee and advertise for $15 million for the animal shelter, which is item number A. Um, do I have a second? Second and made by Councilor Palmucci. Any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. Motion carries. Put that into finance and advertise. Mr. Clerk, with the next item. Oh, uh, Mr. The Council Phelan, go right into the through, through you, Through you, Mr. President, I'd like to take up item 2022. 072B, appropriation for $3 million for vehicles. I would like to motion that to the uh, Finance Committee and advertise. Motion made by Councilor Phelan. Put it in committee and advertise. I have a second by Councilor Palmucci. Any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. Motion carries. Put that into finance and advertise. Thank you. Next item on the agenda. Mr. President. Mr. Council I'd like to, to, to motion through you, Mr. President. I'd like to motion 2022 
0.072C, appropriation for $7 million for public hearings. I'd like to mo move that to the Finance Committee and advertise. Motion made by Council Phelan to move into finance and advertise. I have a second by Council Palmucci. Any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. Motion carries. We were over on number two on the agenda. Now we are at number three. Council Order 2022-074, order uh, approval of Quincy Housing Production Plan 2022-2027. to Do I, uh, can any of the councilors entertain a motion to put it into housing committee? Motion made by Councilor Palmucci to put into housing. We um, do I have a second? Seconded by Councilor Yang. Any discussion on this motion? Seeing none. All in favor? Aye. Opposed. The ayes have it. Motion carries. We put that into housing committee. And next item on the agenda. Next item on the agenda, Mr. President, is 2022-075. It's a gift. Three hundred dollars from Ron Asa, Inc. Doing business as Hair Place One for Dare. Thank you, Council Palmucci. May um, move approval. Uh, motion made um, to put it into uh, to, to get a letter as well. Um, I have a uh, second. Sorry. Second made by Councilor Andronico. Um, Mr. Clerk, please call the roll. Councilor Andronico. Yes. Councilor Kane. Yes. Councilor Harris. Yes. Councilor Liang. Yes. Councilor Mahoney. Councilor McCarthy. Yes. Councilor Palmucci. Yes. Councilor Phelan. Yes. President Demona. Yes. Motion carries. Um, that is done for the regular items on the agenda. Approval of previous mini, uh, meeting minutes from May 2nd, 2022. Councilor uh, Palmucci motions. Um, do I have a second? Seconded by Council Phelan. Any uh, discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Opposed? The ayes have it. Motion carries. Communications and reports from the mayor, other city officers, and city boards. We have none. Unfinished business and proceeding meeting. Seeing none. Reports of committees. Council Phelan, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to. Uh, Take out of the Finance Committee, item number 2022-028, appropriation for $16,400,000 for the Pine Hill Cemetery expansion renovation. On, on May, uh, May, May 8th, the City Council Finance Committee had, had a meeting on this item and voted an affirmative recommendation. So I would, I would move passage on this item. Motion made by Councilor Phelan to appropriate the 2022 $16.4 million for the Pine Hills expansion. I have a second by Councilor Harris. Uh, any discussion on this motion? Uh, Mr. Clerk, can you please call the roll? Councilor Andronico. Yes. Councilor Kane. Yes. Councilor Harris. Yes. Councilor Yang. Yes. Councilor Mahoney. Yes. Councilor McCarthy. Yes. Councilor Palmucci. Council Phelan. Yes. President Tabona. Yes. Mr. Clerk, how many yeses do we have? We have uh, six yeses. Six yeses. Yes. Motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. That's my report. Thank you, Council Phelan. Um, do we have any other reports of committees? Co um, Chair McCarthy. Thank you, uh, <clears throat> Mr. President. Uh, earlier this evening, we had uh, an ordinance committee meeting. Uh, the first item, 2022-007, Walston Center Urban Redevelopment Plan. Uh, Mr. Fassies and company put on a, a good demonstration and a presentation of, of what's to come down in Walston, and I'd like to move that with a positive recommendation. Positive recommendation by Chairman McCarthy and the ordinance. Um, do I have a second? Second. Seconded by Councilor Harris. Any discussion on the motion? <clears throat> Mr. Clerk, please call the roll. Councilor Andronico. Yes. Councilor Kane. Yes. 
Councilor Harris? Yes. Councilor Yang? Yes. Councilor Mahoney? Councilor McCarthy? Yes. Councilor Palmucci? Yes. Councilor Phelan? Abstain. President Tabona? Yes. Seven. Seven votes. Four. Yes. In the affirmative. Motion carries. Also, Mr. President, we had uh, 2022 064. Um, we had a positive recommendation out of the committee for the establishment of the municipal light plant. Uh, I want to thank again uh, Councillor Kane, uh, who has pursued this, as he said, over the last four years. And um, I'd like to move that with a positive recommendation. Positive recommendation, motion to approve from um, Chairman McCarthy. Do I have a second? Seconded by Councillor Harris. Any discussion on the motion? Mr. Clerk, please call the roll. Councilor Andronico. Yes. Councilor Kane. Yes. Councilor Harris. Yes. Councilor Yang. Yes. Councilor Mahoney. Councilor McCarthy. Yes. Councilor Pamucci. Yes. Councilor Phelan. Yes. President Tabona. Yes. Eight members. Motion carries. Eight members. Um, any other reports of committees? Um, Councilor Harris. Thank you. Um, thank you, President Tabona. Um, so uh, this evening we had public works committee. Um, uh, I, I, uh, we had a public hearing, 2022-069 uh, utility grant of location, Mass Electric, Verizon, Kendrick Ave. Positive recommendation from the public works committee. Motion for approval. Motion made by Councilor Harris. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Councilor Andronico. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Eyes have it. Motion Very good. Carries. Earlier this evening, there was a, a, another public hearing for the public. I'm, I'm sorry, Councilor Harris. I'm sorry. I need a roll call on this. Mr. Clerk, please roll call. call the roll. Councilor Dronico. Yes. Councilor Kane. Yes. Councilor Harris. Yes. Councilor Yang. Yes. Councilor Mahoney. Councilor McCarthy. Yes. Councilor Palmucci. Yes. Councilor Phelan. Yes. Yes. President Tabona. Yes. 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 Okay, Next item, Councilor Harris, go right ahead. Thank you. Um, so there was another um, public hearing for the for the um, public works, 2022-070, uh, 20, uh, utility grant of location, uh, Mass Electric, Fax and Park Road. Positive recommendation uh, from the uh, Public Works Committee. Motion for approval. Motion made by Councilor Harris. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Councilor Andronico. Any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, we need a roll call on this. Mr. Clerk, please call the roll. Councilor Andronico. Yes. yes. Councilor Kane. Yes. Councilor Harris. Yes. Councilor Liang. Yes. Councilor Mahoney. Councilor McCarthy. Yes. Councilor Pamucci. Present. Councilor Phelan. Yes. President Tabona. Yes. Eight members. Seven, Eight. seven members. Seven Good. members. Motion carries. And the final <clears throat> uh, public hearing this evening uh, from Public Works 2022-071. Utility grant uh, of location, National Grid, uh, Baham uh, Avenue. Positive recommendation from the Public Works Committee. Motion to approve. Motion made by Councilor Harris to approve. Do I have a second? Seconded by Council McCarthy. Any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, Mr. Clerk, please call the roll. Council Geronico. Yes. Council Kane. Yes. Council Harris. Yes. Council Liang. Yes. Council Mahoney. Council McCarthy. Yes. Councilor Palmucci. Yes. Councilor Phelan. Yes. President Tabona. Yes. Eight members. Motion carries. Uh, any other reports of committees? I'm getting this out of my time. Okay, seeing none, we're moving. Presentation of petitions, memorials, and remonstrance. Any councilors? Um, just, just a little note. Um, Councillor Ann Mahoney's father passed away, so it's, it's unfortunate. Um, he was 94 years old, Joseph H. Mulligan. So, um, you know, obviously, with a long life, and um, Ann's been um, taking care of him for some years now, and she's not been able to make the meeting tonight. Um, he, he died in the comfort of his home, surrounded by his loving family. Joseph was born in Quincy to the late James and Helen Mulligan. Uh, raised in Quincy, he was a graduate of the former St. Mary's Elementary School and the Quincy Trade School, class of 1945. He earned his bachelor's degree in education from the former Boston State College. Joe was a World War II veteran, having served in the United States Army, a master plumber. Joe was a proud member of Plumbers Local 12 for over 70 years 
and had served as the president. Joe was employed by trades teacher in the public, Boston Public Schools for 30 years. Joe was a longtime active provisioner of the St. Mary's Church in West Quincy. He was an avid reader. Most of all, Joe was devoted to his family. He relished time spending with them and supported them on many activities and accomplishments. He was married for 72 years to Mary C. Mulligan. Wow. Um, devoted father of Mar uh, Maureen Menta and her husband Charles Allen Hurst of New Jersey, Joseph E. Mulligan and his wife Linda of Braintree, Patricia Mulligan Flaherty and her husband Brian of Norwell, Kevin Mulligan and his wife Barney of Quincy, Anne Mulligan Mahoney, which is our colleague here on the council, and her husband Kevin of Quincy, and the late Helen A. Mulligan. Loving grandfather of 11 and great grandfather of eight. Um, the services um, obviously are gonna be on Wednesday. Uh, we have a uh, meeting, if you can make it there beforehand, this meeting, um, the, uh, the visiting hours is starts at four o'clock to seven o'clock um, at Sweeney Brothers for funerals at one Independence Ave, um, so May 18th. And then um, you're also to, if you want to attend the funeral mass, celebrate at the Divine Mercy Par Parish in St. Mary's Church, 95 Crescent Street in West Quincy on Thursday, May 19th at uh, 10 a.m. Um, with military honors to follow the Pine Hill Cemetery in West Quincy. So folks, if you have a chance to, before our regular scheduled finance committee meeting at 6.30, uh, four, four, to, four to seven. So um, please keep um, Ann Mahoney and, and her family in your prayers. Um, she wanted to be here tonight, so. Um, also, we have another death in the family, unfortunately, as Joanne Walsh. Um, of Squanum. She's 81 years old, Vero Beach, uh, Florida, formerly of Quincy, passed away surrounded by her family on January 11th of 2022 after a long battle with Parkinson's disease. She was born to the late George Moore, Moore and June Moore on May 14th, 1940. She was a 1958 graduate of North Quincy High School. Prior to moving to Vero Beach, nice Florida, Joanne was very active in her community. She was the Ward 6 counselor for eight years, a little before your time, Joe Newton. Oh, <laughs> Founded by the Atlantic uh, Neighborhood Association in North Quincy and was a governor of Quincy College. She served as executive director of the U.S. Naval Ship Shipbuilding Museum located on the USS Salem. Proud member of the Harbor Health Board, Quincy Conservation Commission, and the Lions Club, which a couple of us are part of, and past president of the South Shore Realtors Board. Joanne was the owner of the Condon and Walsh real estate for over 30 years. Always a strong supporter for the fire and police department, she was an honorary member of the Quincy Fire Department's Association. Joanne loved the Quincy, uh, the Boston Red Sox, boating, cooking, entertaining, traveling, reading, and spending time with her friends and families and her dogs. Her brownies were legendary. She was always willing to help others in addition to her husband retired as the deputy fire chief Joseph Walsh. She leaves three children, Michael Condon and his, and his wife, Shirley of Savannah, Georgia, Susan Beagle and her husband, Ken of Braintree, and Chris, Christopher Condon and wife of Laurie of Hull. Eight grandchildren, six great-grandchildren, two sisters, Maureen Mansfield and her husband, Robert of Pembroke, and Gail Emma of Arizona, and many nieces and nephews and cousins and longtime friends. Um, it was this past Saturday we had a um, Joanne's life um, on May 14, 2022, at the Common Market Restaurant. So if any folks had had previously gone to it, thank you for your for your services to go there from 12 to 3. Um, but if you can keep the Walsh family in your your prayers, and she sat up on this well um, as a Ward 6 counselor. So um, please keep the both of those in your thoughts and prayers. Any other any other Comments from the uh, counselors? Seeing none. Um, going on to the reports of meetings proceeding here. Motions, orders, and resolutions. My fault. Anything? Counselors? Scheduling of a committee meetings and public hearings. Councilor Phelan. Just remind people of the schedule because starting this Wednesday of uh, of the um, of the for the for the finance committee and the budget. And uh, if anyone has anything they need or anything, 
this would be a good time to ask for it, I know. So uh, our auditor has already started to put together sheets and everything, I've already got them emailed to me, and this would be the time to really go through those budgets and take a look at them. But they will be coming up in uh, succession, and also with a lot of the things we got tonight, we'll also be looking for another meeting in, probably in June to start addressing some of those other capital improvement plans and all that. So just a reminder, thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Council Family. Just to elaborate a little bit on that, Wednesday, May 18th is the start of the budgets. At 6.30 will be the public hearing. Folks can come forward. And at 6.45, we start our finance budgeted meeting. We will have three consecutive meetings. So Wednesday, May 18th, Monday, May 23rd, and Wednesday, May 25th, all starting at 6.30 here in the council chambers in person. So I know a lot of people reached out on finance committee meetings, and those will be the three days in a row. I mean, three days over the course of a week. Um, and then we'll have a regular scheduled city council meeting on June 6, which is also graduation night for North Quincy High School, so we won't be starting until 7.30. And then Monday, June 21st at 7.30 is our last city council meeting before the summer break. So um, any other um, committee uh, members, um, chair pe people, that want to put something in, just feel free to, to let us know, like Councilor Phelan did, on what he wants to bring in here for, for um, certain committees. Um, but that will be our last meeting on June 21st. Um, any other comments about committee meetings or what we're going to do for scheduling? Is everybody good with those budget hearing days? I think we are. Motion to adjourn. Motion made by Councilor Palmucci at 801.